For our demonstration today, I'm going to show you how to create a simple mailing list application in less than eight minutes with the help of a million monkeys. We'll start with a blank page and just insert a simple table. Um, we'll put in name, organization, email, and phone for our columns. I'm doing this in Dreamweaver, but you can do this in any application that you wish. Uh, I'm using WYSIWYG just to show that it is very transparent. Uh, you can use any tool that you want without having to worry about the tool interrupting with Million Monkeys code. Uh, I'm going to add a submit button here to go along with it, and now I'll switch over to code page so I can name these. The names of these columns are important because this is what tells Million Monkeys where to stick your data. Uh, in a table in the database, these would then be the names of the actual columns in the database. Uh, we're going to do things in the session scope, uh, so these are going to become the names of the variables in the session scope that are going to store our application. Uh, let me also add a form tag here uh, because without a form tag we can't submit. I'm going to put a blank action on this just so we come back to the same page when we are done. So let's save this out, let's go over to Firefox and load this up. So here is our plain HTML form. Put in some information, click submit, and of course, it doesn't go anywhere because it's just a plain form. So let's switch back over and turn this into a million monkeys form. Very simple, uh, just a couple lines of code to be added. The first one is a CF import tag. Now, the, we're going to attach this to our custom tag library. On this server, it is in the million monkeys folder in the web root, and then in a million monkeys 2.9 subfolder, uh, 2 underscore 9 here and that is configurable. You can put this wherever you want and specify where it is on the CF import tag. You're also seeing that we're adding a storage attribute to the form tag. This is telling Million Monkeys where to store all of the data. And in this case we're going to put it in the session scope. Um, also adding a dump there at the bottom so that you can see it when we're done. So let's put some more information in here and click the submit button and we'll scroll down and there is the information being stored in the session scope. We can scroll back up and change this information. I'm going to put the full name in, submit it, and there we go. We are updated the session scope to contain the full name of information. This of course is not complete because we don't want to deal with just one record, we want to have a whole list of records. So I'm going to come back here, I'm going to add a new column to represent the current row. Um, to specify what our row number is, I'm going to use the current row variable, which is uh, present on any query object. Uh, we do expose these to you so that you can make use of them. And I'm also going to add a hidden field here. Uh, this is going to be the primary key, and you'll see I'm adding a primary key attribute. This attribute is specific to million monkeys, it is not standard on an input tag. And it's what tells Million Monkeys that this is a list of data, and this field is going to tell us which record belongs to which. I'm also, on the storage tag, going to put this in an object called data in the session scope, rather than just dumping everything to the base of the session. All right, here we go, putting some more information in. We'll click Submit, and here is our object. Uh, you'll see session.data contains a query object that contains multiple rows. As I add more information in, it adds more rows to the query. Now, you will uh, notice up here at the top that we are repeating the headers and we're repeating the submit buttons. Obviously, not something that we want to do, also. And this is because Million Monkeys needs to know where to loop. And where it no the way it knows how to loop is by this storage attribute. Right now it's on the form tag, so it's looping all of the data between the form tags. What we really want to loop is just this row of data. So we're going to use another standard HTML tag, the tbody tag. Um, it's very, you know, it's transparent, it's not going to mess anything up. Uh, we're going to transfer over this storage attribute to this tbody tag. And now when we go back, it's going to loop over just the rows and that's what we're looking for. Okay, let's go back into Dreamweaver uh, because now we probably want to be able to delete data. 
So I'm going to add a new row, and in there I am going to put a delete button. Now the way Million Monkeys works, uh, it looks for a form object named delete, and if it sees one, it deletes the row of data that is associated with that form object. So it becomes as simple as adding a submit button, or it could be an input field, or it could be anything. Um, as long as it posts a form variable named delete, and you'll see I'm putting in name delete right now, and the value must be anything but the empty string. So we'll reload. There's our delete buttons. And we can go over and click on one of them, and our row disappears. As simple as that. But, now you'll also notice up here that we have a delete button next to our insert row. Obviously that's not good, because as we enter new information, and then we click that button, it's going to add the delete for the insert row. None of our data ever gets into the query object. So, we need to get rid of that delete button for that first row only. Um, now, the insert row is set with a current row equal to zero, which gives us the ability to add an if statement here around these buttons. And what we're going to say is, if current row is not zero, we're going to use our delete button. But, if current row is zero, we're going to use an add button instead. Very simple. So, let me go in here and delete the name for this button. This is what's going to allow us to save, and we'll change the value to add. Alright, let's save this out, go back over to Firefox, refresh, there's our add button. So, now let's go ahead and enter some more data and click add, just to show that everything is working. And there we go, we're back to inserting again. Let's do one more step and take this data and put it inside a database instead. It's very simple, we only have to change one place in the code. Where we had storage equals session, we are going to change that instead to a data source from your ColdFusion administrator. And now all of your data will be inserted into a table named data within that data source. And there we have a complete application with inserts, updates, and deletes in less than eight minutes with the help of a million monkeys.